Hi guys! So today's video is about um, my nursing career. Now this is going to be extremely hard to do because I there is so much in the nursing field to talk about so I'm just going to try my very best to um, talk about hit some highlight topics but if you have any questions I can do a nursing video number two if you want um, just leave your questions below. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Okay so I'm just gonna start off by um, talking about my college experience. So I graduated from high school. I knew kind of my whole life I wanted to be a nurse. Um, it's kind of weird. My grandmother, I'm sorry, I look really weird with my hair up. Um, my grandmother was diabetic and so is my aunt and my cousin. So I was very um, familiar with um, caretaking at a very young age um, and I knew about health problems. So my grandmother used to babysit with my other grandmother. We used to, I kind of used to go um, to one grandma's house and then the other one during the summer because my parents work full time. So there needed to be somebody to watch me in the summertime. So when I would go to this one particular grandmother's house, I knew that she had health issues. It kind of made me anxious, I'm not gonna lie, just because I knew that she had issues with low blood sugars. So, and if you guys don't know what diabetes is, I don't have time to talk about it, but you can just Google it. I'll put the name right here if you need to go check that out. But most of you guys know. Um, basically, she can't stabilize her own blood sugar and it can, um, it's a lack of natural insulin and you need, I can't talk about it because it's, it's hard to explain. So, yeah, so I would always be anxious that she was going to have like a low blood sugar or she was going to get sick while I was there and sure enough it actually happened one time and I th believe I was about like seven or eight years old and um, all of a sudden she started acting really funny and looked glazed over and I had seen it before when she had been like low like that so I immediately knew um, what to do but I was really scared because I was almost afraid that I was gonna like mess something up somehow I don't know but because I didn't understand the pathology or <clears throat> the pathophysiology um, using some big words here um, behind it so I didn't know like what I was doing but I know that my family members had given her juice before so I go into the refrigerator grab some juice and I'm trying to give it to her and she was fighting me it was not my grandmother that I remember Anyway, long story short, I called my entire family and told them to hurry up down there. But by the time they got there, she we had raised her blood sugar and she was kind of back to normal. She kind of blacked out through the entire thing, doesn't really remember a whole lot. Um, but I remember her being very thankful and thanking me. And that gratification by fixing her or making her feel better was like the best thing ever. I felt like I had gotten first place. I feel like I, you know, just, I was the star. Like I, you know, had done something really good that um, she needed me. And that feeling of being needed and um, helping in that kind of way just stuck with me. So I knew I wanted to be a nurse, so that's kind of my background story. Um, my brother and I were the first people in my family to graduate from college. Now my dad is, a, is has done trades and um, you know, most of my, the men in my family at least are, um, in some sort of trade. And also like they had, my parents had gone to like night school or whatever, and they've gotten some college education, but none of them had had a bachelor's degree. So my brother was the first one to go to college and I just like, there was no question. Um, I went to a private high school and in my high school, it was pretty much there wasn't a lot of people that didn't go to college. And I'm not saying that if you didn't if they didn't go to college or not going to college that you're a bad person. It's just like what how I was kind of just trained and what I was going to do no matter what. So um, it was definitely hard. But so I decided that I wanted to go nursing and I wanted a bachelor's um, degree. I didn't want just my associates because all my other friends were going to a four-year college. So instead of going to like a junior college and getting like an associate degree and just getting my RN, I wanted my BSN, which is Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Or you go to a school that has a Bachelor's of Nursing. They are different. So BSN versus um, Bachelor's in Nursing, BN, I guess. Um, so I have a Bachelor's of Science of Nursing. So um, it was very like definitely science-based. Um, and I went to a school here in Maryland. Um, I went to what is now called Stevenson University. When I graduated, it was actually Village Lily College, but um, it's like 
it was like an all girls school, blah, 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 whatever. But now it's a pretty um, decent sized university here. It's still like a private college. Um, and I, the reason why I picked there is a, it was in a good area of Maryland. I could live away, but still have be close to my family. Cause you guys know I've had health problems my entire life. That's a whole nother video, but I didn't want to be too far away from home. Um, and the city of Baltimore because we have the best hospital in the world, which is Johns Hopkins. Um, so I didn't want, really want to be far away from that. Um, so yeah. Um, where was I? So I picked, <laughs> I picked um, Stevenson University and um, I was kind of disappointed in my college choice just because it was just not the best college, I'm doing a lot of air quotes, college experience. You know, like I was kind of a homebody and I had the security of my parents being so close that I didn't really live it up as... It, I think I would if I went away, away to college, but I'm thankful that I didn't because I do kind of regret that I didn't go away to college just for the experience alone, but someone like me with the health problems that I have, like, it's just, I couldn't, like, I really couldn't. And honestly, like, I, like, I didn't, at 18, when you first graduated college, graduate high school, at least me, like, I didn't really know how to take care of myself. I wasn't, like, how to, like, write checks and do, like, you know, um, adult stuff, like, I guess I was sheltered, I don't know. Um, like filling in my prescriptions, making sure that I had all my medications and I was following up with my doctor's appointments and being away from college, it would have been hard to go every three months home um, because that's when I need to see my doctors, which is many doctors. So I picked um, there and I obviously picked nursing. And like it was the first two years for me were basically mainly science-based. I had to take organic chem inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, microbiology, anatomy, physiology, one and two. I had to take statistics, which isn't really a science. Um, lots and lots and lots of sciences, which chemistry and all wasn't my strong point. And point um, chemistry was not my strong um, point to myself. Is that the right word? Not the right, not my strong whatever. I don't even know. Um, so I didn't do that great in that, but I did really go to microbiology. I felt that that was really, really interesting. Just like, um, uh, bacterias and like how to kill different bacterias and how to treat them and, um, like how different, you know, viruses and blah, 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 blah. That was very, very interesting. And it, I still use it to this day. So that one definitely was great. As far as chemistries, I didn't really think that that was that great because I don't feel like I use it every day. If I was like a pharmacist maybe, but I don't now. So, um, pathophysiology like made so much sense to me. Like it just made healthcare make sense. And I still like look back, have my patho books that I look at some days, you know what I mean? And, um, so anyway, when it came to the nursing classes, I mean, when you first start out, you learn how to like make a bed with hospital corners and how to give a bed bath and all that stuff, which is, I guess was like kind of fun. Like I never took it so seriously. And yes, I do make beds and yes, I do give bed baths. Um, I'm a pediatric nurse, by the way. Um, I deal with kids um, anywhere from infancy to the age, pretty much age 15, I guess sometimes more teenagers, but I also work on a burn unit. My dog's trying to get in here. So that's kind of what I do as far as nursing wise. So I do use those skills, but it just wasn't that serious for me, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it can't be rocket science to give a bed bath, but there is a proper way to do it, actually. Um, and then I started, like, nursing skills. I would learn how to do, um, you know, feeding tubes and um, tracheotomies, like, uh, like uh, care for them and, like, just nursing cares. Um, how to change a diaper, how to make a bed, how to make a bed with a person in it, how to do make a bed with two people with one person, like um, how to place a bedpan, like how to insert a Foley catheter into a urethra of a bladder. Um, lots of skills kind of things. Um, and then, but you would always do it on dummies, okay? So that's not real life. When we actually go into the field for our clinicals or what they call clinical, um, that's when you kind of start learning your skills and practicing your skills, which were always nerve wracking because here's a patient that's ever met they know you're new and they're like, ah, you know, like this chick doesn't know what she's doing, but you'd be surprised. There is a lot of people that are very open to teaching hospitals and teaching students um, because that's how we all learn. You have to learn by experience. Now, I didn't like clinical because I didn't feel like it was real life in the sense that you only get like one patient. 
that's not real life. In my unit, we're actually very blessed. I only get basically only three patients, but I don't have a tech. I don't have anybody else taking my vitals. I take my own vitals. I take change my own diapers and get my patients their own drinks. Like I don't have anybody else helping me with those things. Like that is my job. Now, if I'm busy, like I can call another nurse or a charge nurse or whatever and get them to help me. But that's why we have a small ratio right now is because we do everything for the patient from, it's very holistic and that way you know your patient better than anyone. Um, because if I have someone, like a patient that only needs vital signs and their, you know, their Foley bag ent emptied every couple hours, like, I'm not going to get to know you, you know what I mean? So that's a really good thing to look for when you're looking in the job is patient nurse ratio. Because if you have like six patients, even if you have a tech, it's still like crazy, you know what I mean? Um, so I didn't really care for that about clinical. Now, my best clinical was my last year when I had an awesome instructor. Your instructor means everything. I'm actually going to be instruct instructing clinicals for nursing students um, coming next summer. So, uh, and I love to teach. I love having students because I don't want to be one of those nurses that eat their young. A lot of times when you're new in a lot of units, the older nurses eat their young, meaning like it's almost like pledging a sorority. Um, they, you know, not haze on you, but to give you the crap schedule, to give you the crap assignment, like are bitchy to you. And that's not the kind of environment you need to, when you're learning. Um, I came to a unit that everybody really got along really, really good. And um, patient satisfaction and staff satisfaction was really, really good. So my last uh, semester in clinical, um, I had a really good instructor and he took us to an ICU and he gave us two patients. Now two patients in ICU is a lot, but and I actually got bitched out by one of the um, nurses on the floor saying that I wasn't taking good care of my patient. And I cried, which happens often um, in clinical and in real life. Like some days you just had enough and I have to go into the med room and lock myself in there and let it roll. Cause not only is it emotional, it's stressful, um, but it's a good stress. Like, and I'll get into more about that a little while, but there's some days where it's like you do, you're trying so hard and you're just, it just doesn't work out the way you want. So, um, so anyway, okay, where was I? Senior year nursing, clinical. Um, I learned my most um, in the last year. I also really recommend <clears throat> if you're in nursing school to get a job in the nursing field. You obviously can't be an RN, you can't be a nurse, but you can be a tech or something like that just to learn the flow of taking care of multiple patients and also just learn the flow of a functional floor, whatever kind of floor or unit or nursing that you want to do. Um, I did that. I actually, and by the way, if you do that, you're more, once you become licensed and once you finish school, they're more likely to hire you because they already know what kind of worker you are. So my best advice, like when I get a new nurse, when I'm precepting a new nurse, <clears throat> and she hasn't worked in the in the field, never worked in a hospital besides clinical. It's like they just don't get it. They just don't get it, and it just puts them further behind. It's a bigger learning curve. So I definitely recommend that. If I can recommend anything, I recommend that. Um, okay. So when I did um, when I worked as a nurse extern, that's when my senior year I got a job. Um, cause I was working retail restaurants. I was a nanny, um, in college cause that just saved me some good money or made me some good money. And then, um, it was like a med, med surge and med surge means medical surgical, like medical patients. Um, and then surgical patients. If you guys don't understand that medical is like, if I have like a chronic medical disease, like, uh, chronic liver, liver failure and a surgical patient, someone that just had a liver transplant, something like that. That's medical and surgical. So it was a medical and surgical floor and it was an oncology unit, okay? Which oncology means cancer patients. I didn't really deal a whole lot with oncology patients, but I was just kind of a tech. So I would do all the dirty work for the nurses because they had six, seven patients sometimes, which I hated that first off. I was like, mm, this isn't really for me. And the reason why I chose pediatrics, first of all, I wanted to work in a big hospital. I wanted to work in like a university hospital or something big Whatever the good hospitals in your in your um, state are, go there because I just feel like the learning you learn so much more, you see so much more, and I don't know. I just now that I've worked in a big hospital, I don't think I could ever go to a community hospital ever. Just I feel like I'd be bored because I'm used to the fast pace. I'm used to chronically the sickest of the sick is what we get, and that's just like I don't know. It's a sense of pride. It's a sense of. Um, the best of the best. Like, I don't know, like, I don't want to sound cocky, but like our nurses are top notch and you're trained well to be well. Um, 
Okay, so anyway, when I was working on that unit, I'm all over the place, sorry. Um, this video is gonna be long. Um, I was working with these, you know, an older crowd, probably like anywhere from like 50, there would be some young ones every now and then, 50 to like, I don't know, 100. Um, and I would leave every day like feeling so unfulfilled, so unsatisfied. I, no one ever said thank you. And yes, I'm working at a Baltimore City. It was one of a, a Baltimore City hospital, community hospital. No one ever said thank you. No one ever was happy to see me. No one ever, like, they were just, adults to me were mad because they were sick. They were cranky, they were sick, they were fussy because no one would come see them and they had to deal with this and you know doctors wouldn't let them out and they just don't get it. But it just was really unfulfilling for me. So I just said, if this is what nursing's like, I need another career. Some people love that. My sister-in-law, she's a nurse that worked on the floor that got me the job, loves it. She loves old people. She just loves them. And to me, I can't do older people. It's kind of more sad for me because I feel like they are losing the person that they once were. You know what I mean? The giving up the independence, you know, that now I have to, I'm now wheelchair bound or now, you know, like I can't, I wet myself because I'm old. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't deal with that because they would just lose that pride and it hurt my feelings. Like when my grandparents their health was failing it was really hard for me like really hard and they just didn't get it like they just didn't get it it's like they're adults but they couldn't rationalize like why they were sick and they just they were blaming everything so <clears throat> i worked then in an er for my practicum and practicum is like a 200 hour or something that you have to do or so on your senior year and you work in a unit that you think you want to work on just to get some experience Mine had to be critical care, so I chose the ER that I was, the ER of the hospital with the med surge oncology. I loved it. I love the fast pace. I love the autonomy, meaning like I could make more decisions on my own. I love the like fast pace, like quick assessment. They're here because they're broken. Their leg is broken. We're going to take care of that leg. It wasn't like more, oh, the psychological and the family. It wasn't like whole picture. I love that. And I got to see some pediatrics, which I loved. <clears throat> I knew I loved it. But me being having health issues and me being very immunocompromised, meaning like my immune system is very um, depressed because of my liver transplant and the medicines that I have to take. Because if my immune system was up and working like yours, um, I'd be fighting off this liver that's not mine. So in order for me to stay out of liver failure, I have to express my immune system. Working in an ER, you get everything. There's no protection. Whatever coming through the door, you're ex kind of exposed to it, unfortunately. They try to be the best that they can and have standard precautions, meaning, you know, gloves for everybody, but it's too risky for me. <clears throat> so lastly, I'm gonna try to wrap this up. Like I said, leave your questions below. Um, when I was offered the job in the ER, I was also offered my job in pediatrics because I knew someone that worked in pediatrics. When I shadowed on the pediatric floor, the kids playing in the playroom, the family bond, the how happy these families were that you're taking care of their kid and how you treat them as your own, it just stuck with me. I didn't know if I was gonna love it but I just like had a different feeling about it. So I took that job um, and I'm glad I did because I wasn't immunocompromised until a year or two later. Today, now nursing is hard. The shift work, the night shift, the weekends, really hard. I can talk about more that more in the next video. Really hard. It's really, and it's hard for your social life, especially the first two years. But when I would find a patient that was there for a long time and I would come into work and they'd be like, Nurse Rachel, I'm so glad you're my nurse today. Or will you please be my nurse today? Or let me give you a hug or draw me a picture and thanking me or cards or necklaces. Do you know, I don't have, I have stuff on my refrigerator from patients everywhere. I have like beaded keychains, I have GIMP, I have all kinds of stuff these kids have made me because they legitimately are happy that I've taken care of them. And that to me is worth all the stress, all the emotional bad days, all of everything, <clears throat> all of the crazy parents and crazy families and crazy kids and, you know, sad situations and the deaths that we deal with, like that to me is worth it when I come into work and someone's happy to see me. And I just feel like this is why I do this. When I have a kid, for example, we had a kid come in that, <clears throat> my throat is like really killing me. I had a kid come in 
that was completely neurologically devastated, was hit by a bike, fell off his bike, um, and was pretty much very delayed, couldn't speak, couldn't eat, couldn't, was diapered, like not himself. Um, didn't get, did get traked and everything. So we never thought that kid would bounce back. We never thought that kid would be the same. And I find out like, six months later that kid's walking back in school like all this crazy stuff and I'm like that's why I do this or a kid that was burned that came in was burned 35% of her body and comes back to visit and is all happy singing Kesha with me like first of all who sings Kesha at the age of like four but those kind of things you know what I mean like it's just it's definitely my calling now I love doing the makeup artistry on the side I love everything about makeup I love making people feel beautiful but I could never pick one or the other so Luckily, I can do both. So that's my video. I'm sorry this is so long. Leave your questions below for nursing video number two, and I'll see you guys in the next one.